Today, I will show you the settings of Game Loop in detail. In this video, I will cover both low end and high end topics with full detail. Till now, I honestly haven't seen a single video on YouTube where things are explained properly or in exact detail. On YouTube, you will find plenty of so called lag fix videos, but to be honest, all of them are just copying each other. Wherever someone finds settings working fine for them, they simply share the same without any proper knowledge. I'm not saying that every single YouTuber is useless except me, but the truth is people get confused about some concepts like DirectX and OpenGL, RAM and CPU, and so on. Some of them might explain it to some extent, but still, most people who are using high-end PCs never really get their lag fixed. Anyways, I personally never found a proper detailed video, and when I started facing these issues myself, I did a lot of research. Finally, I reached a solid conclusion, and now that's exactly what I'm going to share with you. By the way, in this video, I'll explain everything separately for both low-end and high-end PCs step by step. Let's get started. The very first thing people usually do is optimize their BIOS for better performance. And inside BIOS, you'll notice some tricky settings like turbo game mode, game boost, game performance enhance, different names, but all relatable. Even I have one of these features in my BIOS and I actually enabled it thinking it would give me better performance. Now my specs are high end, but the moment I turned this feature on, my game loop started lagging, especially when enemies were near me in buildings. For example, I press A to go left, but my character moved late. And the same delay happened when I pressed D. So make sure you disable this. It doesn't improve game loop performance at all. From my experience, I'd even say it's useless in most cases and very inconsistent with performance. So yeah, just keep it off. All right, let's jump directly into the game loop settings and PUBG Mobile. When you open game loop settings, the first tab you'll see is basic. Honestly, it's exactly what the name says, basic. There's nothing here related to performance. You can uncheck most of the options. The only one that might matter is auto run at startup. If you're the kind of person who plays game loop all the time, 24 seven, then enabling this will launch the emulator automatically whenever you start your PC. It's just a time-saving feature. Other than that, nothing here impacts performance. Oh, and by the way, there's also language and country. These don't affect ping at all. A lot of YouTubers suggest changing them, but that's totally useless. They don't reduce your ping in any way. Now, let's move to engine. Here, you'll see three options, OpenGL+, DirectX+, and Auto. Let me explain them in simple words. DirectX Plus works well on low, mid, and even higher tier systems, but it's not the most stable. On the other hand, OpenGL Plus works perfectly without glitches like rendering errors or random crashes, but it requires a strong GPU. Personally, I use OpenGL Plus instead of DirectX Plus. Why? Because sometimes my game doesn't load graphics properly on DirectX, and when I switch to OpenGL Plus, the smoothness feels way better. Now, here's another perspective from the gaming community. Many people say Windows users should always prefer DirectX Plus because it's native to Windows. And yes, that's true when we talk about games running directly on Windows. But inside an emulator, it's a different story. It's not about the host OS anymore. It's about how the emulator renders graphics using your GPU. That's why performance depends more on your hardware than on Windows itself. So what should you choose? If you're on a Ryzen 2600 or Intel fourth gen CPU, I recommend DirectX Plus. If you've got a GPU like GTX 660 or higher, then OpenGL Plus is also a great option. As for auto, honestly, it's kind of pointless. I tested it, and even when I selected auto, the emulator still used DirectX Plus. So I'd only suggest auto if you're a complete beginner. So in short, OpenGL Plus is better if you have a good GPU or if you're facing issues like black screens or crashes. Otherwise, DirectX Plus is fine. 
Next, let's talk about rendering cache. Enable this, why? Because when you land in areas like Pochinki, the emulator will cache the rendering. That means the first time it will load everything, but the next time you land in the same spot, it won't need to render it again. This improves performance noticeably. Then there's force global rendering cache. This one helps reuse graphics assets across sessions. Basically, it makes things smoother and reduces stutter. But here's a catch. If you're using an HDD instead of an SSD or NVMe, don't enable it. On an HDD, it can actually slow things down and cause stutters. Prioritize discrete graphics card, another setting people often misunderstand. This is only useful if you have both an integrated GPU and a dedicated one like NVIDIA or AMD. If that's the case, enable it so the emulator forces the dedicated GPU. If you only have an integrated GPU, just ignore it. Enable rendering optimization. This one you should enable no matter if you're on a high-end or low-end PC. It improves how the emulator handles graphics, reduces GPU load, and overall makes performance smoother. Enable vertical sync or vSync. This synchronizes the emulator's frame rate with your monitor's refresh rate. It prevents screen tearing, but it might slightly reduce FPS if your PC can't keep up. In short, if your PC is strong, but your monitor is 60 Hertz, enable vSync. If not, leave it off for smoother gameplay. Anti-aliasing, I honestly never noticed a difference with OpenGL Plus. It already runs at a high graphics profile, so enabling or disabling anti-aliasing didn't really change anything. Personally, I always keep it disabled, but you can test it on your setup if you want. Now for memory. Let's say you have 16 gigabytes RAM. The obvious choice is to assign half, eight gigabytes, to the emulator. But before setting it, open Task Manager and see how much RAM Windows itself is using. For example, in my case, Windows is using 6 gigabytes out of 16 gigabytes. That leaves 10 gigabytes free, so I can safely give 8 gigabytes to the emulator. One more tip. The emulator doesn't use much RAM at startup, but the usage increases the longer you play. Restarting the emulator every two hours is a good habit, as it refreshes RAM usage. Even if you assign 4 gigabytes, restarting every two hours will keep things smooth. Next, processor. Emulator always uses physical cores, not logical ones. I have eight cores and they're strong, so I could assign all eight if I wanted, but usually I keep it on automatic. For low or mid-range PCs, if you assign too many cores, Windows and the emulator start fighting for resources, and you'll experience lag during gameplay. So automatic is the safest choice. Resolution. If you have a GTX 660 or higher, go with 1080p like I did. Otherwise, 720p is best. Don't try custom resolutions, stick to these presets. DPI, this isn't your mouse DPI. In the emulator, it controls how detailed the display looks. For low-end PCs, 160 DPI. Mid-range, Ryzen 2600, Intel 6th Gen, 240 DPI. High-end, 320 to 480 DPI, depending on preference. Higher DPI means sharper visuals, but it also loads the GPU more heavily. Model. Honestly, it doesn't affect much, but if you want to set it, Gameloop recommends Asus ROG2 or Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now let's move PUBG mobile game settings in emulator. You'll see options like 720p for low-end PCs, 1080p HD for GTX 660 and above, 2K FHD for GTX 1060 or higher, Important, match your game resolution with emulator resolution. If emulator is set to 1080p, then keep PUBG Mobile also at 1080p. Otherwise, key mapping issues will appear. Graphics quality, smooth for low-end, HD for high-end. But if you're competitive, always go for low-end settings, even on a strong PC. Lower settings give faster response time. HD is only for enjoying visuals. FPS. If your monitor is 60 Hz, choose 90 FPS. If it supports 120 Hz or above, then set FPS to default, so PUBG can unlock higher frame rates. Finally, a note on game mode in Windows. In my case, enabling it caused lag. Game mode basically disables some background functions, but it can also reduce the priority of emulator services, which causes stutter. So I keep it off. And don't forget to enable a high performance power plan in Windows settings. That's all about emulator settings. I know I added a few extra things like BIOS and game mode, but those are important to know. If you guys also want a separate quick tutorial on GPU settings in Windows or NVIDIA control panel, let me know in the comments. For now, test these settings and share your feedback. This is Windows Fixer, signing off.